Now we will have a small discussion. And the discussion will be about regulatory guidelines for e-commerce and what they mean for us. We have to be more concerned about that. We have to have a knowledge. If you want, if we want to be a um, business, uh, uh, we want to be in business. We have to get, get a reasonable knowledge about all these things, about the country's taxation policies, common policies, and all. A lot of things happening in India at this time with the reform, a very very important reform to harmonize uh, the taxation between the various states. Actually, uh, it's a very interesting case. Uh, in Bhutan specifically, we know people who order stuff and it gets delivered to the border town and then someone comes and picks it up because uh, officially they cannot ship to Bhutan and they cannot receive payments. I thought you guys are so high up in economic freedom. That's very illiberal. Well, that's very illiberal. Yeah, that's very illiberal. There's nothing to do with freedom. It's, mm. it's no. That, no, for these companies, it's not worth delivering to Bhutan. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a business thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's nothing to do with Okay, that's, um, no, that's very, sorry. I was, I mean, Richard was talking about things coming into Bhutan, like, yes. you know, flip card stuff. And I was talking about a, a Bhutanese business setting up online, selling yes. to somebody outside. The hurdle is in, you know, payment. To my knowledge, uh, we have to have responsible for finance ministry, uh, in Inland Revenue Department, as well as the Sri Lanka Customs. So there are guidelines in these institutions. The rules of Bangladesh Bank is, you can take the money as much as you can, but you cannot return back the money for a single dollar. Uh, the Bangladesh government is now uh, give the chance, if you sell any product through online, you don't need to pay any tax. Government of India is coming up with UPI. Has anybody mm -hmm. heard yes. of it? Mm -hmm. right. Sorry, so already there. No, it will be coming in the next six months. No, but I, I can access UPI through my ICICS bank. Uh, yeah, you, you wouldn't be accepting payments for any other things as of now. Okay. So, but it, it, it hasn't started working. Okay. So what UPI <coughs> does is, as Rishab uh, had earlier mentioned, that every transaction is remitted into your account on C plus one. So for example, apne aaj, uh, if you bought, uh, so for example, ma'am sold some product for thousand rupees, the payment gateway holds the entire payment for thousand rupees for one day. What we have rules, we have real time settlement. Right. We so you can what UK will be doing is they don't charge anything. Mm -hmm. That's a government sponsored payment gateway. And they'll be remitting in real time. These are facts which are little known and we want to uh, start an advocacy in order to liberalize this. It's very difficult to trade between India and Pakistan. It's very difficult to trade between Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And probably e-commerce is a way to somehow break the borders and create more prosperity and more chances for many people. Clear terms and conditions. Uh, having a clear set of terms and conditions is actually a prerequisite uh, for you to even apply for a payment gateway. Be vigilant. Choosing a reliable payment processor can help you weed out fringes of fraudulent activity. As an e-commerce business owner, it is very, very important for us to sort of keep our eye on the transactions that are happening. Shipping and delivery policy. A clearly defined delivery policy is a must have so that the customers know when to expect their products and how their packages will be delivered. The refunds policy, I think this is the most important slide. Uh, refunds are, the, are an important part of building trust with customers and you will hamper conversions if you can't recognize what refunds will sometimes be required. Information commensurate with latest consumer contract regulations. I think the whole concept of privacy and encryption becomes very, very important here as well. Who can access your consumer information? Uh, and I think that's the most valuable part. And I think in the morning we were discussing that what is commerce. I think a lot of commerce is driven by uh, data such as this one. Liability limitations. Limited liability is a standard practice across most contracts in a bid to limit any future claims. Usually when we build e-commerce stores, we take a flip card or we take any reputed site and we just take those terms and conditions and usually you get covered in all the aspects. What happens and who pays for returns? Returns are a fact of life in e-commerce and it is useful to be upfront about your return process. The biggest aspect of the return process where 
there is a contingency is who's going to pay for the shipping delivery terms it's always useful to take into account your delivery terms and uh, for and directly reference your shipping policy how to collect taxes online navigating sales tax laws can be difficult i think this is the biggest gray area which we talk to gst we will be able to uh, clean up I'm very happy to hear, hear about boom in Bangladesh. Boom in Bangladesh. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>